Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the EGFH Season 1, Week 3 in Overwatch. If you missed it, we just finished up watching Firmington take a 2-0 victory against Daniel Hand earlier, and we are now getting ready to do the match between Kaner Tech and Ludlow High School. My name is Cool J, and I am joined once again by Vic Sharp. Before we get into this game, I'd like to thank our sponsors, the Yukon Gaming Club, the Yukon School of Engineering, and HyperX for making this season possible. Yeah, absolutely. Thank Those sponsors have been fabulous. And for those of you that missed the previous game, the map pool for week three starts off with the hybrid map Kings Row. We move on to the control map of Oasis, and then we will end off this best of three with the escort map Route 66. If the teams have to play a tiebreaker, then we go to Watchpoint Gibraltar to see who takes the series. And I don't know about you, Cool. I am hoping we get to see that tiebreaker map in this one. Yeah, I'm really hoping we get to see Gibraltar. I think it will show some good strategy out from both sides. And I think it'll be fun to see some more dive coming out. I know it's not the most popular thing right now, but now, I personally love seeing Kings some good coordinated dives. But right now we're starting off in King's Row and what are you expecting to see out of these two teams? I expect a very close game, to be honest. Kaner Tech is 2-1 and one entering uh, this match. They have won two games 2-0 and lost a game 2-0. Meanwhile, Ludlow is 3-1 and one right now. The, both these teams are near that top of their group. And as we just end closer and closer, there's only a couple weeks left till playoffs. This match could be of utmost importance. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how this plays out. Of course, we are going to be seeing Kaner Tech in the blue, defending first, Ludlow in the red. And right now, Ludlow seems to be memeing in spawn. They got Sim, Tor, May out there. I'm really interested to see how much of that actually stays. Meanwhile, on the defense, Orion Zarya coming out from Kaner Tech, along with a Soldier Junkrat. Standard stuff It should work pretty well for them, although... I will mention, I think a Lucio would work better than a Zen. Yeah, it, it'd be interesting to see. Obviously, Zen very strong right now individually, but with their comp, that feels like a Lucio would definitely fit. Uh, we talked about this a little bit before the game. I'm interested to see how Lazy the Crazy does on this Reinhardt. He is up against a very strong tank in uh, Stevek, so... He's going to really be a bit of an X-factor for how well Kaner can take this match. And it's going to be Reinhardt v. Reinhardt, it looks like, on the tank battle. So even better. Five. Yeah, I think Lazy the Crazy is definitely going to be a factor, as you mentioned. I think he just needs to stay strong against this Rhin. But here we go. A triple tank with a Reaper coming out from this Ludlow offense. Usually you see a quad tank when you want to run tank heavy, but... We'll see how the Reaper works out against this relatively squishy comp from K Kaner Tech. Yeah, and they've already pushed so far onto the point. Lynith is the first one to fall, though, and you mentioned it's one DPS. Their damage is done. Can Kaner Tech take advantage of this? Well, Glacier able to take down Lazy the Crazy, who got a pretty bad charge, and Jeff Woods goes down as well. Kaner Tech is getting surrounded. Stevek pushing onto the point. Look at that. Coalescence already built up, healing all three of those tanks. Gets you a lot of all charge. Andrew caught in the hotel here. He's not going to survive very long. And even though Lineth went down very early, Ludlow still able to take that first point. Yeah, I just need to make, stop making predictions on fights as they start, apparently, cool, because I have just been wrong all day. That was such a good turnaround from Ludlow that they're making this tank comp work. They're building up ult charges so quickly. You talked about how quickly the Coalescence came out. Oh, Shark, Snark takes, gets taken down by that Reinhardt, and that might stall. Eclipse coming up now on the flank with that golden junk rat gun. Here comes the Riptire and the fire strike from Stevek. He knew it was coming. Eclipse going to chill up top here, try and get some easy damage, but it looks like they're going to punish him with that Moira orb. He's going to have to back off. Panthers, Kaner Tech, Lazy the Crazy has that shatter ready to go. Can he hit it? He blocks Stevek's shatter. He comes back in a huge one from Lazy the Crazy. Three down. Jeff Woods finishes them all off, and they're pushing forward with that coalescence. A great fight win from Kaner Tech there off the back of a shatter from Lazy the Crazy.
We yeah. talked about these tanks. We talked about Steve Beck going against Lazy the Crazy, and that was the first example of I think what'll be a long series of these two head to head. And Lazy the Crazy takes the first little battle between them. Yeah, he's able to fight back after getting an unfortunate charge in that first fight. And now look at these alts, though. From the side of Ludlow, they've got three alts ready to go, but they can't really combo them with anything. I think they're going to try and engage with Sound Barrier here. Maybe see what they can get going. Here comes Whole Hog. They're trying to wreck Lazy's shield, but here comes a grab from the defense. Kainer Tech, can they follow up on it? It looks like it's going to come late. The tire coming in. He finds Snark, but not much else. But look, Lazy the Crazy already has another Shatter ready to go. Is he going to use it? No. Here comes Jeff Woods in the back line, though, with that visor. Fruity memes using the coalesces trying to keep everyone up. Is it going to be enough? It doesn't look like it as once again Ludlow is forced to back away as just another really good defense from Kane or Tech. They use their ultimates. They kind of baited out some of Ludlow's ultimates. Kind of like you mentioned, they couldn't find a way to combo. Lineth is finally getting towards that Death Blossom, but now it's only Death Blossom and... Uh, the Zarya ultimate, so this is going to be once again very difficult for Ludlow. And it appears based on all charge that Stevek missed yet another shatter in that last fight. A grab comes out and Lazy the Crazy with yet another shatter, but it's not enough. Lineth with a one man death blossom, I guess he takes down the Rip Tire as well. He's going to go down to McDouble though. Lazy the Crazy, another bad charge, and now Stevek is on the attack. Zoom with two kills right there, and Ludlow pushing forward. Zoom finding yet another on this Roadhog, and this triple tank comp continues to work very well. Lineth now on that Genji. Yeah, and they definitely, they tried to go for the combo. They used the Zarya, they used the Death Blossom. They got the Rip Tire, and they got one kill, but they isolated Lazy the Crazy, and that seemed to be the big point there. The fact that that Rhine was not there for Kainer Tech means that Ludlow, with this triple tank, could just roll through them. And here comes yet another Shatter from Stevek, and again, he doesn't manage to find much. Andrew getting knocked off the edge by that whole hog. Ooh, Zoom almost knocks two more off, but somehow they just managed to stay on, and here comes a grab from Kainer Tech. It's deflected! What a play by Linus on that Genji to deflect the grab. And that makes Kainer Tech in even worse of a position than they already were. I didn't even think they should have used the grab to begin with. But now they are reeling as Ludlow is surrounding them on this attack. Yeah, the important thing to note though was that Stevek got taken down by Lazy the Crazy. Uh, the battle of tanks is just continuing, and it's actually forced Ludlow off for a little bit as they give their tank time to get back in here. Fruity Means has his coalescence up. Lenith is approaching that Dragon Blade, and it, it's going to be probably an old, old battle here. With if Ludlow wins, it could be the end of this attack. Lazy the Crazy, the Shatter ready to go. Eclipse can't use the Rip Tire though. He gets taken down by Lindeth. Stevek with a nice charge. And here we go. Lindeth with the Dragon Blade. He finds one already. He is looking for more. He's deep in the back line. There goes Dread Melon as well. A good boop on a McDouble from Glacier. The Tire going to come right out of spot and it finds Stevek. But is that going to be enough? They're so close to the end. Yeah, Andrew just buying time using that Transcendence, trying to give his team time to respond because this is in the. Benefit of the defense, but a nice Graviton Surge catches three. They're falling very quickly. Lazy the Crazy with a beautiful Shatter, though, catches Glacier. And that might be enough to stop the Ludlow push. Lazy the Crazy getting so much damage, but Schnark somehow managing to survive. Lazy the Crazy <laughs> pins him, and... Is that a C9? They, they left point. They left point. <laughs> I, think, I think we can say C9. Um, I'm gonna say C9. Well, uh, reset, reset the uh, counter. So, but was, <laughs> it has been zero days without a C9. That was such a close attack. Yes, there so shows two minutes still on the clock for Ludlow, but that was so back and forth, so much action. Lazy the crazy, and Stevek just kind of going back and forth. The DPS trying to trade kills. I mean, that was intense all the way through. For me, the big MVP, why they pushed that attack through, Fruity Memes on, uh, I think it was the Moira. So much healing. Snark was so aggressive on that Zarya. He was taking so much damage. He was such high charge. And Fruity Memes just 
barely managed to keep him alive. And so he was really able to put out even more damage, stay alive in that back line, and he took so much attention from Kaner Tech that he created a ton of space, and it was all thanks to Fruity Memes keeping him alive. Yeah, that was... Fruity Memes, he charged the Coalescence so quickly, so many times. It seemed like every fight Coalescence was up for Ludlow, and that healing, when you're running that triple tank, is so important and so key. And we get the first look at Ludlow's defensive comp with the McCree, the Mercy, the Zenyatta, Roadhog, the Junkrat, and the Orisa. So, a little more standard this time. Uh, am I crazy? Are there like three, four, there's four Boston Uprising skins on this defense right here. They're having a nice spray party. Look at the Shanghai Dragons and the L. <laughs> 10 million IQ sprays right here. They're going to be running that Arisa Hog with the junk. Zoom, as I may have, I wanted to mention earlier, very comfortable on this Junkrat pick. It's one of his favorites, in fact. We're going to see the same comp coming out from Painter Tech, this triple tank with a Reaper. Is it going to work just as well for them? Yeah, and this time they actually have the Lucio, and they pick off Lineth, and that might be the way. Lazy the Crazy also gives Stevek in the charge. He dies for it, but that's exactly what Kaner Tech needed. And look at that. Just like that, again, Stevek going down, but they found that first pick on Lineth, and I think we're starting to notice a pattern here. Lineth seems to be getting himself caught out a bit too much. He's going to switch over to the Reaper right as I'm mentioning that. I think that's a good switch because I think Kaner Tech wants to stay on these tanks for at least a couple more fights. Yeah, absolutely. And if Ludlow is running these kind of one pure DPS champion or hero with Lineth on now the Reaper, he can't die in oh Eclipse. Eclipse getting bursted down. He got caught out a bit too much. Didn't expect Ludlow to be holding so aggressively. Look at this coordination from Ludlow. Zoom with a kill on the Andrew. You have to imagine they'll be pushing forward here. Here comes the tire. It finds Dreadmelon, but Zoom getting taken down by the Moira Orb. Oh my goodness. The memes are too strong today. Yeah, and the back and forth trading continue. Crazy actually falls. Glacier picking up another kill in this hold. And you mentioned it. It's such an aggressive hold from Ludlow. Who would have expected them to be holding under arc like that? And just for the point, just to be now making point, Andrew falls again. Coalescence is going to come out, but this is going to be close. And Glacier on this Zen. Finding so many fat right clicks from the back line. Oh, but he wasted Transcendence, which enables Jeff Woods to go in and get that big Death Blossom right there. McDouble helping them finish things off as well. Lineth in the back line, but it's not going to be enough. Four and a half minutes. I don't think they're going to be able to push all the way to second checkpoint off this, though. So they need to be ready to set up for this next fight. Yeah, you mentioned Fruity Memes. He didn't quite use the uh, ultimate, but did have to use that revive brought back one and just died for it. We're seeing coordinated play from both teams. You did say, indeed, they're not going to quite get this second point. But the hook, Mr. McDouble is going to fall immediately. A huge hook from Snark. As you mentioned, they're going to engage with the Valkyrie. And Lineth using Death Blossom, not able to find any kills, but is able to find tons and tons of damage as they're pushing Kaner Tech back to spawn. A great halt from Steve McNair to finish off Dread Melon. And a great retake. And look at this positioning again from Ludlow. So aggressive. It means that whenever Kaner Tech wins one of these fights, they're going to have to take another one in order to win that point. Yeah, this the thing that's catching me here is the decisiveness from these teams. Ludlow especially, as soon as that pick came, there was no hesitation. They went forward as a six-man unit and just bold their way through Kaner Tech, and it looks like we're going to get another one in the alleyway here. McDouble has had that grab for a while. Here we go. He comes out with it. The Coalescence as well. They're following up. They found two. They found three. Zoom going to find one with the tire, but how long will he survive in that back line? Jeff Wood's finding a kill. Mercy tried to fly in for the res, but it's not enough. Although, I still think they didn't quite need that whole hog from Eclipse. Yeah, that might have been a bit of an overkill uh, ultimate from Eclipse there, but the fact that Fruity Memes tried to fly in for the res, like you said, wasn't quite able to get anything. This allows now Kaner Tech to position aggressively, and Lineth falls. Lazy the Crazy finds the kill. And yeah, Lineth getting caught out again in Fruity Memes. I guess must have engaged that Resurrect. Doesn't have it off cooldown. 
Will she be able to pick up Linus? No, he's already respawned, but Schnark coming right back, finding a kill onto Eclipse. Ludlow with Linus coming back should be able to re-engage here. There goes Andrew, and Kander Tech suddenly in big trouble on this payload. Yeah, and they're looking for Lazy's getting jumped on the back line. Steve X gonna pick him off. Mr. McDouble falls as well, and this should be another hold from Ludlow as now they're pushing Kaner Tech back. Three and a half minutes on the clock, only about 30 meters to go, but it's probably the hardest 30 meters right now. And we'll see both teams setting up. Crazy has had that Earth Shatter for a while. It's easy to set up Earth Shatters against an Arisa. Wait for her to put down her shield and then just walk past it. He went for it. He finds you, but Zoom with a three man rip tire in the back line. An alt wasted from Lazy the Crazy. And Ludlow now in great position to push forward yet again. Man, doesn't matter if the Reinhardt is in the back line. It doesn't matter if it's a four or five man Earth Shatter. When the Junkrat can do that, Zoom, so nicely done. Andrew falling as well staggers a little bit, and this might make Kaner Tech waste about another 10, 15 seconds trying to make this push happen. Oh, oh Dreadmelon. Dreadmelon going down to spam from Zoom, and again, as you mentioned, more time off the time bank. Only 30 seconds left before the time banks are equalized, and Zoom! Eclipse tries to fly right onto him, but Zoom says, I don't think so, takes him out, and... This Ludlow defense just keeps staggering Kaner Tech worse and worse. They need to back out. No, hold on. The only good thing here from Kaner Tech is their ult charges are getting absurd. They're about to have five of them ready. That's going to be what they need to do. They now need to back up, coordinate this push here. And Lazy the Crazy, he's okay being hooked. Probably not great. And it does force out Coalescence actually and a nice disengage from Ludlow. Yeah, a great disengage, as you mentioned. Here comes the tire, though, with the grab and three kills from Eclipse. But a dead eye from Lineth. The transcendent is going to keep him up. He only finds one, the sound barrier. Jeff Woods using that visor. And now the only problem is Kaner Tech used all five alts, and they're still going to have to win another fight with the stalls. Yeah, we're going to see Lineth actually switching over to the Genji. He just wants to, I think, try and wreak some havoc as they're pushing so close to the finish. Can they get coordinated? They're coming from the side. It's gonna be close, but they're gonna go for it. And Zoom with the rip tire, but it's not enough. Andrew finds a boop on the Snark. All the kills are in the favor of Blue right now. Lineth coming back though. He finds Jeff Woods. He's in the back line. He's looking for more. He finds Eclipse as well. And look at this. Ludlow able to stabilize at their own spawn door. Backs against the wall. Yeah, Andrew falling off so he doesn't get staggered. Lineth did indeed get into the backline wreak havoc. He's at 80% towards his Dragon Blade. One minute left for Kaner Tech. Now they're close enough to the goal that a f one fight should be that third point, but it's going to be very difficult. All charges are going to be so important here for both teams. And here we go. Lazy the Crazy oh. on the front pushing forward, but Lineth! Another early kill on the Eclipse, and here comes the Dragon Blade! Can he get anything with it? Dreadmelon gonna get pushed back into a corner by that whole hog, and another one found a fat shatter, but it's not enough. Lazy the Crazy really just panic shattering right there, and a Doomfist Farrakhan coming out from the side of Kaner Tech. They're just trying to see if anything can work right now, as Ludlow has really found the magic combo to hold on this spot. There's also a rip tire from Zoom. If he gets someone big this over, Dreadmelon's the first one to fall. Yeah, he takes down the Mercy. There goes the Doomfist, Jeff Melon. So Eclipse is the only source of damage for Kaner Tech here. Laser the Crazy going down. It's so close, but it's not quite over yet. Can they turn it back around? I don't think so. Doesn't look like it. It's only Mr. McDouble. That's going to be the to overtime kicking down. And that was absurd from the falcons ludlow that was so so close cool play of the game and i think something we didn't expect from our x factor came out there and that was how to deal with other tanks because i i think i can say that lazy the crazy won the rhine v rhine battle against steve Eck, but when the arisa came out he really started to struggle yeah and we started to see you mentioned a couple of those panic alts from lazy the crazy 
towards the end of that attack, and we started to just see Kaner Tech not necessarily fall apart, but their coordination started to falter as it really came down to clutch, and that's where Ludlow took over. But it's now 1-0. Ludlow takes King's Row, and we're heading to Oasis next. What do you see from this after watching that first map? Um, I think another thing that kind of went under the radar, Jeff Woods had a lot of trouble getting any value out of that soldier. There were so many shields, so much HP in his way. It's really hard to hit the junk rat when he's flying all over the place. And he stayed on that soldier for so long because he had that all. He really wanted to use that all, you know? But uh, I think that was really something that had a bigger impact on Kaner Tech than people realize. And so when he switched, it was almost too late. And he switched to the Doomfist too, which I think was almost a tilt pick because I don't really think that does much more than Soldier does because you're really trying to get damage and finish people off. And Doomfist doesn't really do a good job of that. Yeah, some of the, some of the picks coming out of... Kaner Tech as the round started going further and they started to get into that crunch time really felt that they were just trying to find something that works that really late switch to the Mercy and the Farah just felt like they knew that someone might die so they wanted to try and get the res but it was just so coordinated from Ludlow so controlled and that's a little bit of what we expected from this team heading in And as we go to Oasis, I'm expecting to see more of the same. I think Ludlow is going to pull out more of that Arisa comps. And I'm hoping that Lazy the Crazy and Jeff Woods can figure out how to adapt. And we are just getting ready to go into Oasis now. Do you think we're going to see any dive at all? Because I've just realized I don't think we've seen any dive so far today. Yeah, we haven't seen dive. And I think we will just from knowing what... Both these teams, kind of their favorite heroes are, it looks like at least Kaner Tech from their initial picks are looking for dive, maybe. Uh, obviously, that can always change, but hovering Genji and Diva and Winston, that's a pretty dive. They do have Jeff Woods on that Reaper, and something that I didn't really realize, I think Jeff Woods' flexibility, I was looking at Zoom's flexibility maybe as a negative but i think jeff woods is really having trouble here he really favors the mccree and the soldier and when he has to play something else it seems like he struggles yeah and we do see they did switch off the genji onto the pharah so not really a whole lot uh Stevek has a torb cool I'm fairly certain that's going to switch, seeing as Lineth is also on that symmetric. I don't want that to switch, though. I want to see Steve Egg play Torb. I don't think he will either, but yeah, he goes to the Reinhardt. I am disappointed now. A Ryan Zarya with a Reaper Fara. It seems they're expecting a dive comp to come out from the side of Kainer Tech. Again, Kainer Tech still in the blue, Ludlow still in the red here. And they are going to go into this left mini health pack room as I kind of expected with this comp, and we'll see if they can force them into the close range where Reaper and Roadhog can really go to work and Jeff Woods with an early call to Stevek, but Lineth gonna punish him right back. Eclipse in the sky on that Farah. Can she find the damage she's looking for against this heavy close range comp? Yeah, it does not look like it. As it looks like the first fight is so far going in favor. A beautiful hook's gonna take down Eclipse, and this should be the fight to Ludlow, as when that Reaper falls like that, uh, on the side of Kaner Tech and Lineth was still up. That just screams advantage Ludlow in that fight. And we don't see any... Well, we do see one comp change. McDouble on the Arisa now instead of the Zarya, or instead of the Diva. And I'm not sure how well Arisa Winston is going to work out for them. We'll see what they try to do with it as they're coming in here. Only about 20% built up for Fairfield Ludlow, so this is still anyone's matchup right now as they're Skirting the point, trying to decide where to go, and a big boom from Glacier! He finds two, and that's gonna be it. Fairfield Ludlow gonna push in, Eclipse finds a kill on Alenith, but Glacier with yet another boop on that Lucio. He is... He can do this all day, man. That man is insane. Check the records he's playing, because that's just not fair. But yeah, and it, Mr. McDouble having to reset, 
is so big that point percentage is now up to 50 and we're seeing a change again mr mcdouble onto reinhardt now his third switch or second switch third hero already of this push yeah and i think mr mcdouble is really getting frustrated he's trying to see what's working and none of it really is but i think he should have stuck with that diva they should have kept trying to do this dive and maybe switch one of the dps yeah, and Jeff Woods takes out Lennon. That could be big, but the Earth Shatter from Stevek catches three. Can Ludlow capitalize? Yeah, a big Shatter from Stevek. As you mentioned, Dreadmelon, though, has the Valk up. Tried to get a res off, but something happened. It didn't work. Unfortunately, that res cooldown still does engage. And I think Kindertech were really relying on that res. They're backing off now, but Jeff Woods is finding kills. He's already gotten two. He's looking for more. He's got Linus now too. Eclipse finds Glacier. He gets taken down by a uh, Biotic Orb, but Fruity Memes finds himself all alone on this point. Yeah, and they do hold long enough to kick over overtime, but this should be a cap by Kainer Tech, and they will indeed at 99% find a way to keep this first point alive and I thought the switches were gonna hurt them in terms of alt charge and just figuring out what they want to do but they finally may have found something that worked and the Ryan Zarya yeah as you mentioned from Kaner Tech just mirroring essentially what Fairfield Ludlow had they are a bit behind on alt charge but Sivek doesn't have that chatter they're gonna need to get a great grab from Schnark here that's what they're looking for. But Jeff Woods with the death balls on me finds Glacier. There's so much damage on everybody else. Can they finish these kills off? The transcendence comes out from Andrew, I believe. Eclipse finds Lineth. And this fight is fully in favor of Kainer Tech, but here comes the grab and Eclipse takes out Snark. The grab is not what they needed. Zoom gets booped down into the pit with that whole log, but still somehow the kills are coming back in Ludlow's favor. Eclipse with a three-man barrage. Zoom underneath finishes him off, but Ludlow gonna lose that fight. Yeah, nice hold from Kainer Tech. I think it was so important taking Lineth down early like that. And I, the Death Blossom from Jeff Woods, I thought was going to do so much work. So many members lim limping out with such low health. 65% now on the point. This is going to be a big fight for really both teams. And Stevek apparently used his shatter at some point in that fight. He doesn't have it. Schnark switch up Azari and Zoom caught the back line. He goes down. Here comes a grab from Mr. McDouble, but he doesn't catch much. He is able to take down Glacier off of it, but will it be enough? Schnark gets d in the back line and eclipses all over the place on his far out. Linus switched to that McCree trying to deal with it, but it looks like it's not enough. He does get a spicy headshot on the Jeff Woods, though, and all of a sudden, this is looking very difficult for Kater Tech. There goes a Clips. Lineth is popping off on this McCree. He has Deadeye ready to go. Lazy the Crazy all by himself on this point. Yeah, they're just trying to hold. They're trying to get in. It's overtime on both sides now. And it feels like Kaner Tech is just trying to get back on the point as much as they can. But the Earth Shatter from Steve catches Jeff Woods right as he gets onto the point. Is it going to be enough? A contest was still coming down from Eclipse, stayed alive for so long, but that should be the cap and the first point over to Ludlow. And a fantastic fight from Ludlow and the heroics of Lineth to turn it around when Eclipse was looking unstoppable on that Pharah up in the sky. Eclipse did so much work in the last, the second half of that point. Like you said, good adaptations from Ludlow. That's what we've kind of been wanting to see all of through the games today is adaptations and how these teams are making these mid-point, mid-round changes. And both teams in that last point did fairly good jobs with their adaptations. We saw Kainer Tech go from 99-0 to 99-99 double overtime. So we were expecting this match to be close, cool. I really want this one to keep going on and we're gonna see genji farah coming out from the side of ludlow a farah reaper yet again coming out from the side of kaner tech and i think the dive coming out from ludlow is really gonna have the advantage here they're gonna be able to take the high ground much better eclipse getting caught out almost going down he is able to escape a dread melon unfortunately takes the blunt of the damage and he's gonna go down early and look at lineth Going through with the dash, dash resets, and there we go. That's going to be an early first fight win from Ludlow. 
Yeah, I wanted to see Linnet on the Genji. It's something he plays a lot. He's very comfortable on it, and we're seeing why. And Ludlow's strategies just seem to be a little better than Kaner Tech's right now. They were on this point, set up on the high ground, so that by time Zoom and Fruit, or sorry, by time that Kaner Tech was trying to push in with the Pharah, they weren't able to. And here we're going to see a quick adjustment from the side of Kainer Tech, they have the dive now. They dive up onto the high ground, but McDouble gets d almost immediately. Eclipse, though, coming back with a kill on the Glacier. Is it going to be enough? Eclipse gets taken down by Shark. Jeff Woods all on his lonesome. He's going to go down and miss Mr. McDouble. The poor pilot diva, he's going to re-mech, but that's just going to feed more alt to the side of Ludlow. He is able to take down Stevo. a rare mishap from the side of Ludlow, but they're going to be able to stabilize 50% built up already. Yeah, Steve Eck falling there wasn't the biggest thing in the world. He should be able to get back. He has the ultimate. It's a six My alt charge from Ludlow least. here. My this is going is to be very, very difficult for Kainer Tech to push through. We'll have to see what strategy they go with. They have just the Coalescence to answer with, and they're going to go for the dive again, it looks like. And Schnark, with absolutely no defense matrix left, gets demacked immediately. Lineth with a Dragon Bait in the back line, but Eclipse finishes him off. Eclipse on a Genji of his own now. Is he going to be able to find much else? He's already got 50% of on his own Dragon Blade. Glacier going so low, he's going to take him down, and now it's just Steve and Zoom, but Zoom is finding kills in true Eclipse fashion. He finally goes down. Can they finish off Steve and cap this point? Looks like they will. 92% not quite able to hold long enough to force overtime from Ludlow. And that was just really nice we played from Kaner Tech. We mentioned six ultimates from Ludlow. They only got to use two of them. Kaner Tech just jumped on them, got the dive across so quickly that there was really no reaction from Ludlow except to lose point. And Eclipse so close to this blade, he's pulling it out. Can he find anything? There goes the Farah. Can he find anyone else? He's going to get some damage on the Lineth, but the res comes out onto the Farah. So overall, that blade didn't find any value. Zoom with the barrage, able to find Jeff Woods, and all the kills are going in favor of Ludlow right now. I think they're going to get this retake. Yeah, they should indeed. Lazy the Crazy just trying to buy time. Same with Mr. McDouble. Something so important in that fight was Schnark took down, I believe, Mr. McDouble. And we're going to see Ken. Nope, nothing from Mr. McDouble. Somehow. Kainer Tech is still able to stall this out. Look at all this percentage they're building up. Schnark goes down as McDouble gets demeched. And look at this, already up to 60%, and they're still contesting. The res on the Schnark comes out. Is it going to be enough? And here comes a blade from Lineth. That's what they're looking for. Can he find the damage? Can he find the kills? There goes Dreadmelon. He's looking for more. The Moira can't take Andrew down. He will eventually, though. Jeff Wood's able to get a nice helix on the zoom, and look, they're still contesting 80%. They've been doing it, what, 35 now? Amazing yeah. coordination from the side of Kainer Tech. Absolutely great stalling, but the point's finally going to tick over, and really, Fruity Memes has been proving so pitiful on, uh, or so important on this Mercy as Dreadmelon. They're just trying to get on again. Overtime is forced. The point is ticking down. Can Kainer Tech have one last stand? And Lineth with three kills in that fight on the Genji and no dash resets required. And he has another blade. That's two fights in a row. And I think overtime's going to tick down here. Ludlow going to take a not so easy 2-0 against Kainer Tech. Yeah, that was such a first... To see a 2-0 result there doesn't tell the whole story. That was so close. And I think we all might know uh, what this play is going to be from Glacier as the boops are all over the place. Fantastic play there from Glacier. We pointed it out as it happened. And I think that was a really great team effort there from the side of Kainer Tech and Ludlow. Yeah, both teams played really well. And in my opinion, the unsung hero of that Oasis map was Fruity Memes on that Mercy. I didn't quite get to say it before that last fight. He had so many key reses that it seemed like Kainer Tech was going to get a pick and find momentum just for Mercy to res.
and you know really just both maps he played so well his moira on king's row his coalescence timings were fantastic his reaction timings were proving really strong and it made the falcons look very scary it's definitely something that i didn't expect to see during my pre-match uh like getting ready trying to learn more about these teams uh i didn't really expect to see much at all out of that support role out of that fruity memes but he really surprised me and it was something that i was impressed with if you liked what you saw you can catch catch the action every week starting at 3 p.m on tuesday with rocket league wednesday with league of legends and thursday of course with overwatch you can follow us at official egf on twitter and Twitch for updates and announcements. This season wouldn't be possible without the support from our sponsors, the Yukon Gaming Club, the Yukon School of Engineering, and HyperX. This is Cool J. You can find me on Twitter at CoolJ underscore OW. I really appreciate the follows. And you just finished watching Ludlow Falcons taking the 2-0 over Caner K- Tech Panthers. And I am Vic Sharp, and you can find me on Twitter at the Vic Sharp. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time.